Infiniti has long had a stylish four-door sports sedan, but it was beginning to show its age in many, many areas. On this edition of Test Drive, it's replacement. This is the Q50, a car that, according to Infiniti, was massaged by none other than Sebastian Vittel. Exactly what Herr Vettel's input was in the Q50, I cannot say, but from behind the wheel, it has a decidedly polished finish. I did not care for the intervention of some of the safety items, specifically the things it did to the steering and throttle at times, but that's grist for another day. What is very evident is that stylistically, Infiniti has kicked the Q50 up several notches when compared to the outgoing G37. It all bodes very well for Nissan's upscale brand, as it readies for the future. Hop behind the wheel, push the start button, and you're ready to have some fun in this Q50. Now, it is very lavishly appointed. However, there are two things I really don't care for. First of all, the paddle shifters actually sit on the steering column and not on the steering wheel where they should. The second problem, well, there it is. It just came to life. It takes a long time for this infotainment system to boot up. When it does boot up, it's fairly complex. Two separate screens. This one is controlled by this controller. The other one is touch sensitive. It takes a long time to learn and even longer to boot up. Q50 is offered in two very different flavors. The base car comes with a 3.7 liter V6 that puts out a healthy 328 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. Both are strong numbers. The hybrid version employs a smaller 3.5 liter V6 engine that's rated at 302 horse and 258 pound-feet of torque. It works with a 50 kilowatt electric motor, which brings another 67 horsepower and 214 pound-feet of torque. When the two power sources are giving their all, the Q50 Hybrid has a net system output of 360 horsepower. Both engines use a slick and sophisticated seven-speed manumatic transmission. The hybrid system used in this Q50 is different from the norm, like the ones used by Toyota and Ford. They typically cannot be driven at any faster than around 75K using electricity. This car, on the other hand, well, it has a seven-speed transmission. It can actually be driven at speeds of up to 120. I was actually coasting on the highway at that speed using nothing but electrons. That is why the hybrid system should become more popular. The hybrid really is a very strong performer, even if some of it comes at the expense of overall fuel economy. Regardless, it sprints from rest to 100k in 6.1 seconds, and it eclipses the more important 80 to 120 passing move in 3.3 seconds. The beauty is found when the optional all-wheel drive system is added to the mix. It fires the power to the rear wheels, but can send up to 50% of the drive to the front wheels as and when needed. It is a good system that should, quite frankly, be considered mandatory. One of the things that changes this car's personality is the drive mode selector. It allows the driver to pick snow, eco, standard or sport. Each case, it alters the transmission, the throttle and the steering. Now there is a personal mode, it allows you to pick some, all or none of those changes. Forget eco, complete and utter waste of time. Standard, perfect for running around town. My favourite mode, however, it was sport. It adds some real edge to the drive. When it comes to the handling side, the Q50 attacked the pylons with aplomb. The suspension does a very good job of limiting body roll without impacting ride comfort, while said all-wheel drive system and the P245-40R19 tyres effectively limit both over- and understeer. The direct adaptive steering is also a little different. It eliminated the feedback through the steering wheel over a rough road, and it did so without depriving the driver of the required feel. On the subject of feel, the hybrid's brake pedal is horrible. Yes, the Q50 has got plenty of stopping power, but the pedal feels so spongy underfoot. 
There is absolutely no question, this Q50 is a much better car than the one it replaces. It's fast, it's fun, it handles very nicely, and it's richly attired. Now, coming into the test drive, I wondered if the hybrid was going to be worth the premium. Frankly, it's not. I would take the 3.7 liter engine, all wheel drive, and stick the $6,000 premium in my back pocket. Thank you very much.